I, I wanted to make sure I got this correct because Liz wears a lot of hats. Business development for the city of Charlestown. Correct. Right? Correct. I got that I got that going on. Yep. And you're in charge of some major things like West Virginia Fest. I am the organizer for West Virginia Fest, which is yeah. a city event. Yep. Okay, so let's yes. talk about West Virginia Fest. What is it? So when West, is it and how's it work? Sure. So West Virginia Fest is a festival celebrating West Virginia's birthday. Uh, Charlestown started it about six years ago, and it has grown exponentially. It is on June 17th, and we extended our hours this year, so it's 10 to 5. 10 to 5. Mm -hmm. And is there any cost to participate in any of the events? There is not. It is a free event, uh, free admission. You can come and just walk the streets. There's no like ticketing or anything like that. Yeah, what are you offering that day? So we have two beer gardens. We have live music, three different bands. We have over 100 vendors, which was a, a crazy response this year. We have food trucks. Of course, all the local businesses are going to be offering specials that day. And we have a very exciting contest called the Are You Smarter Than an Eighth Grader contest. And Mr. Harvey has participated in he this, is. as I recall. Yes, I he did. Has. Well, how did it go? First year, I was on the winning team. Were you with an eighth grader or against an eighth grader? We were against the eighth graders. You beat the eighth graders. We beat the eighth graders, and I, uh, you know, did you feel good about that? <laughs> I felt really good. Did you make any cry? We stumped them. I felt really good because it's like you get a a, you're a redo in life. You get to go back, nice. like like when you're 26 and you go back and play midget football. You just <laughs> it's like that movie no, bench warmers, no, right? No, it's not like that at all. These kids are phenomenal. They they are just recently won the the Golden Horseshoe Award in West mm -hmm. Virginia. That's the last person you want to be up against. Sure. So, what you remember any of the questions? Yeah, yeah. Hit me, hit me with a few. Like, what are some of the questions? What you had county to answer? is Pinnacle Rock State Park in? I don't have a clue. What is the uh, youngest county in West Virginia? Don't know. The okay. youngest county. The newest. You, correct. Yes. Yeah. No. No idea. It's Mingo. Mingo's the newest county? 1895, Bloody Mingo. And then Mercer County is the home of Pinnacle Rock. Pinnacle Rock. State Park. Did you Park. get those? Yes. What stumped you? Uh, you know what? And this was embarrassing. Um, there was one about R Jennings Randolph and his his efforts on um, the voting, mm -hmm. making it 18. A a available to 18, and I missed that one. I said bird. I don't know why. Because, I mean, you know, every other – Every other, I, was th I guess I was thinking about highways, transportation yeah, sure. or something. I, I only know that was Jennings Randolph because of the actor whose name escapes me at the moment who came in here playing Jennings Randolph the one day. And he, he was doing a, a show as Jennings Randolph. And he went on in character about getting the vote for 18-year-olds being a bipartisan effort between Republicans and Democrats. Yeah, you know what? I, I was I knew it wasn't Bird, and I was trying to remember Jennings Randolph's name. And I always get, I always get it like, I've, I have this mental block where I say J Randolph Jennings, or mm -hmm. J and I, and so I wasn't very secure about that. So we went with Burden, and and we're, we're wrong. <laughs> but we won, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're number one. Yeah. Well, for, for yes, but that was that's that was a long time ago. That was 2019. Liz, is it typical for adults to beat the eighth graders at these things? No, Matt's team has been the only one to beat the eighth graders. <laughs> oh wow! Mm -hmm. No way, Harvey. Well, yeah. look, Ma Ma Major Harris was on our team, mm -hmm. and uh, was that good? Because he's a Pitt I, he's a Pittsburgher. He he was great. I got to spend a lot of time with him that weekend, and he he's just he's just the nicest guy, and he's, he has the best stories. Especially you know being a mount huge Mountaineer fan, mm -hmm. just hearing his stories and it was was incredible. And he you know him hanging out with. Emmett Smith at a restaurant, you know, and all his perceptions of, of things as I, if he would, if he was playing today, you know, his NIL money, he would be set for life, but uh, things were certainly different back then. And, and him, the trappings of, of going through the draft process and the combine was just incredible. Cause he was just like a lot of, you know, it was all new and he was discovering this big wide world and, mm -hmm. And it was great. And he was hanging out with some of these professional athletes that are now, you know, in the Hall of Fame. It was, and he, he's just a humble gentleman. Most WVU fans believe if he doesn't get hurt, West Virginia has a football national championship. And I believe those people are absolutely correct. Yeah, a lot of people think that way. Yep, absolutely. Back to you, Liz. All right. So uh, his, his was the only team 
to beat the eighth graders. Who, what yes. eighth graders do you have let, set up this year to take on these adults? So we have two teams of eighth graders this year. One team is from Shepherdstown Middle School and one is from Charlestown Middle School. Both of those teams uh, made it to the state history bowl competition, which is incredible. <laughs> and the Charlestown team actually got fourth place, which that's pr- some pretty steep competition. Mm-hmm. And then one of those people on that team made the um, all-star uh, history bowl team so like all state basically yes yes so it's it's gonna be tough this year i'm losing my title i can tell you <laughs> are you competing again this year yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm back he Who's got with you? specifically picked to be on a team jim wysong um is, that, is he related to lock yes they he are is. they are related yeah mm-hmm. jim, jim's jim's a charlestown fixture he he works for the city and um he 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 could be the mountaineer mascot. I mean, he's just a, oh, he loves the mountaineers. He loves the mountaineers. He bleeds blue and yellow, and you know he's he's going to be a great captain. He's the captain of the team. Mm-hmm. And then who? Um, what's his, Mr. Zollner? So Mr. Ray Zollner is Zollner. Uh, the third person to join their team. And so just a little backstory. So Jim was standing next to me during the competition last year, and he was answering all the questions. And I said, why aren't you up there? And he said, well, you make me work. Because, you know, he, he works for the city, and he has to do a lot for me that day. And I said, well, next year you're on a team. He said, only if I get to pick my team. Okay, so he picked Matt Harvey, and then Mr. Ray's owner was actually everyone's eighth grade teacher many years ago. Nice. So he taught at Charlestown Middle School. So, and one of somebody on the other team is Andrew Skinner, who is oh, Jim's yeah. cousin and was also Andrew's teacher. So it's kind of a fun little thing. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's some smack talking going on, and this you, this new team that you announced is very interesting. Oh, that, that's going to be a tough team. It is going to be a tough team. Tell them about that. So one. the the team we just announced is Team WVU O line offensive line, and we have Aaron Howe, who is a uh, vice president BCT, who played in two thousand two thousand and four uh, for WVU, and then we have David D Jarnett, who of course is an attorney here in Martinsburg, I believe, who was uh, offensive line and I forget what year. And then we have Mr. John Skinner, of course, Andrew's father, who was on the offensive line many years ago. And then, of course, Zach Frazier, who is currently on the O-line at uh, WVU. So they're going to open up some holes there, man. They are. They are. <laughs> and, you know, you know, offensive linemen, they say that they're just the smartest people on the team. So Have to be. Yeah. You have to be cerebral to be an offensive lineman. Mm-hmm. It's going to be good. And the... The, the pepperoni roll contest. Oh, the Don't pepperoni forget. roll contest. Yes, you've got to get, uh, if you're interested and you think you can uh, cook the best pepperoni roll, we're doing that. We're taking uh, registrations now. So the week before, we will taste all the pepperoni rolls and choose a winner. We have an amateur and professional. All right, so I got a question. And, and I'm glad you're here this day, Harvey, to figure this one out. Yes. Liz, so uh, last weekend, this past weekend, a son bought a used car, Right. And the, the salesman was from Clarksburg. And he said, despite what Fairmont people tell you, Clarksburg is the home of the pepperoni roll, the inventors of the pepperoni roll, and there is no discussion. Fairmont people are wrong. It's mm. Clarksburg's. What do you got for me, Harvey? True or false? False. Country Club Bakery, Fairmont. That's who, that's who I recognize as the inventor of the Pepperoni roll. I would agree. Liz? I, I, I would agree Fairmont is is the home of the pepperoni roll. Mac McAteer differs with you. He says it's Clarksburg. And and he sh- and I'm glad he does because I love that th- they have this rivalry because what it does is it produces better pepperoni <laughs> roll. Competition. Yes. yes. Competition. Yes. So what's you don't need a certificate of need to make pepperoni rolls. But they make some really good pepperoni rolls in Clarksburg. So what's a smart move here in a competition for pepperoni rolls? Do you go for sort of traditional, you know, Pepperoni. There's not a lot to a pepperoni roll. Or do you? Is a smart move to beef it up and add kale and you know kale? I don't know. I don't it's, know. It's, kale? It's, this is not the first just, segment anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> <laughs> We've moved on. Joe. Yeah, yeah. No, but is a smart move to get a fancy pepperoni roll to win, or do you kind of want to keep it basic to win? I think it's original. You've got to go original because I know in the past some people have added some sauce, and that's. Disqualifier for it's, a lot of Western Yes, it is. Or it is. cheese. We, we don't do the sauce. It so. has to be handheld, If you right? put cheese on it, it's a calzone. It has to be handheld. Pepperoni roll. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's a lot of people say that. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry. Do what? If you put cheese on it, it's not a pepperoni roll anymore. It's a calzone. I love calzones, though. 
Who's the Who's the uh, Do you have the judges set up for that? Uh, we do not just yet. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Ricky Twyford is kind of handling this whole competition. So, yep. How did you get put in charge of this, Liz? Years ago, uh, when I took the job in 2019, they said part of your role is organizing West Virginia Fest, and here we are, a couple of years later, and it has grown exponentially. Last year, we had about 8,000 people. So, how many are you expecting this year? Because it's got to be bigger because it's people want to get out even more now. Yes, it's got to be bigger. I mean, the most we've ever had, probably at a festival since I've been there, is around 10 for the car show. So I'm kind of aiming for those numbers. Hoping. All right, what's the proper area for West Virginia Fest in Charlestown? Where, where do you park and where do you celebrate? So we celebrate from Mildred Street all the way down to West Street on uh, Washington Street, west and east. And then the side streets are also shut down, Charles Street, Lawrence Street, Samuel Street. The farmer's market will be operating as per usual. Places to park. Um, so there are two lots on Congress Street. Uh, there is a lot on Liberty Street. Right, Denny has been so kind as to open their parking for us. The Presbyterian Church has opened parking for us, and the rest of it is just street parking for now. I'm trying to get some more parking spots, but are the meters going to be on? No, free parking all day. Sweet. And you have some celebrities. Coming. We do. We do. We have uh, so we have three WVU players: Zach Frazier, uh, C.J. Donaldson, and Nico Marchiol, who is uh, going to be the quarterback. Correct or well, we don't know. We don't know. It's we don't know. It's between him and Garrett Green. Okay, all right. But that, those are three big names mm-hmm. it, for West Virginia fans. Zach was just—he's like offensive something, All American something. Yes, he's, yes, he's very decorated. Yes, yes, and highly regarded. And and C.J. Donaldson is, barring an injury, was having a breakthrough year. He was, and he was and great then, against Pitt. And then Nico was. This highly touted recruit from Arizona that is a lot of people believe he's the future quarterback for West Virginia. If not this year, certainly the year after. But that uh, Garrett Green is performing pretty well too. Yeah. And we also have Gabe Osaboyan, who is coming back. He was a basketball player a couple years ago, yes. I think, and he's really excited to be here. So we're excited to have him. People seem really excited. And so. I saw, I did see a Marshall edition. Oh, Lauren Zaglifa. Yes. yes, Lauren Zaglifa. She is, I, I cannot believe how she how far she's gone with her pole vaulting. And it's amazing, her accomplishment. So, yeah, she's she's back from Wisconsin, so she's going to be giving some pole vaulting advice, and we're excited to have her as well. I want to know about economic development in the city of Charlestown. Yes. Charlestown's a beautiful city. <laughs> Thank you. Historic. Uh, I've enjoyed every single visit I've ever had to Charlestown. Uh, talk to me about recruiting business there, what the atmosphere is like right now in 2023 for recruiting business into Charlestown and Jefferson County in West Virginia. We are actively recruit, recruiting businesses. We have grown uh, really well over the last couple of years. Uh, COVID was uh, was, a, was a weird time for us because we had eight businesses expand during COVID. Uh, it did not really hurt the town too much, which was great. We, so we had a lot of expansion. We've had a lot of new businesses start up. We have two two new businesses that have started, and they are just booming, and they, they love being in Charlestown. What kind of businesses um, are they? So the Succulent Garden, which is a plant store, and, I mean, they attract people from all over. People are driving hours to just come to their little shop, uh, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then Betts and Coop's Boutique, which is a new boutique in town. And she was a, a kind of a trailer-based business. She would go to festivals. And um, I just kind of had been following her. And I said, you know, why don't you come Why don't you come open up a storefront? And, and so she did. And she's doing amazing. And people love having her there. She's a, she's a great addition. Uh, but we're actively, you know, looking for retail and restaurants. The, the struggle we have is we do not have enough buildings that have kitchens and so uh, the city of Charlestown actually uh, we created this revive commercial grant program two years ago and it is intended to uh, get kitchens in our businesses downtown and so we we gave out three of those grants last year so we're hoping that all three of those places will well one already has now a kitchen and then two more hopefully in the future so we're really focused on trying to get more kitchens downtown. Is that something that's just simply a matter of the way the building is constructed, or are there any ordinances or laws that are restricting some of that? There are no ordinances or laws that are restricting it. It's really the the the, the building. So it's how they're venting up or venting out, and it's and it's costly. So that's really the 
what's prohibiting it. Those are some older buildings. Yes, they are. Yeah, Mr. Gilstrap. <laughs> I got distracted. My, I, my chair is sinking. Have you I can that? see that you I've are gotten, I've gotten disappearing. Eight slowly. inches shorter since I've been sitting here. Okay. And the question is, do I just get up and adjust the chair, <laughs> or do I just ride it all? Just ride there? it, man. Like so, quicksand over it. there, man. So I can. I, I defer. I, I have been thinking about the wrong things. You're thinking about sinking into the ground. I am. I'm just wondering well, how short does this chair actually go? You, you, you need to be at this festival, John. I can tell you that. Colin, I, can you take John's camera off and put it on Matt Harvey for a moment so John can get up and adjust his seat? There you go, Matt. Your next question is yours, man. Yeah, let, don't pay attention to Gilster. He's going to fix his chair. I hear there's an election going on today in Charleston. There is. Yes, there is an election today. We have uh, city council uh, members are up for uh, election. So that's today. City hall's closed except for for voting. And there's a kid zone. Let's go back to the West Virginia Fest. There's okay, yes. going to be a kid zone? Yes, there is a kid zone. That's where the Are You Smarter contest is. And then we just uh, uh, signed uh, Ke- Kel- Kellen Littles and the Chunky Lops, which is a high school band, to come perform in the kid zone. So that'll be fun. Hypothetical uh, question. Let's say you're a best selling New York Times author and you wanted to come and set up a booth and sign books and, and autographs. Is there any vendor space available? Oh, man, I have a waiting list. Really? It's, I do. And I, I would do. rather put a fork in my eye than do <laughs> that very thing. <laughs> we can do that, too. It's like, it'd be better than a, a dunking booth. Well, there you go. So who are the vendors? What, what kind of vendors? You say there are 100 vendors. What, what kind of things are they selling? Um, they're artisans, crafters. You know, they've got the, the woodworking, uh, the stained glass. Uh, there's knitting. There's th- this one woman makes, like, these little Lego people that people loved uh last year um so it's all kinds of of handcrafted vendors and and we had quite a few we had 80 last year and my wait my waiting list is about 50 deep at this point so this all right forgive me i, I don't i'm new to the area you don't get to charlestown very much is this the traffic circle area in is that no that's right it, it's the historic courthouse okay i know where that is the, the main the main drag through there okay you know, you mentioned Legos, and whenever I hear about Legos, it always reminds me of uh, Christmas, probably around 1997 or 8. My youngest son got this, I don't know how many pieces of Lego. It's called Cactus Town. My, I should say my oldest son. He was very young at the time, probably like three. And I spent all Christmas Day, and when I say all, I mean all Christmas Day assembling Cactus Town. <laughs> and I went upstairs to get him to tell him, Dominic, Cactus Town is completed. He comes downstairs, couldn't have been more excited, celebrating, yeah, Cactus Town. And he goes in, and in his mind, Cactus Town was a thing that needed to be blown up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he proceeds to blow up Cactus oh, Town. No. <laughs> He's like, Pah! doing all the sound effects and everything, and I'm sitting there. I mean, Cactus Town even had a little old Western shack, and like a hotel, and inside the hotel was a bed and a chair and, and a table. And on the table was a little water pitcher. That's how detailed Cactus Town Lego was. I even got my hand in this little opening to put Cactus Town water pitcher in, and he blew the whole thing up. Eight hours of work done in, in a matter of seconds. But so, he had fun. But he had fun, and that's a Christmas I'll never forget because of Cactus Town Lego. So mm-hmm. anytime someone mentions Legos, I automatically get a, a little smile and a laugh inside. <laughs> So, uh, Liz, it's June the 17th. June the 17th, 10 to 5. City of Charlestown. Mm-hmm. No admission. Admission. Lots of fun all day long and probably good weather. Yes, let's hope so. Hey, thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me.